And we've been interested in the Cryoptics wave system for a number of years, partly because the advantages that the great encoupled infrastructure can offer in terms of the sensitivity of the system, and also partly because of the um, the GCI platform, the way the chips, the way the valves work, it facilitates determination of very fast off rates, which is perfectly ideal for um, weak affinity fragment screens, and also the fact that these, these valves are non-clog, which means we can put more crude samples through it. The other reason we we're interested in widening the offerings that we have at Domainix is simply because, you know, it's well known within the field that different fire biophysical scopy methods will identify different hits, and these different hits will form, can move, be moved into crystal structures. So here I've just highlighted a figure from Martin Scanlon's paper from back in 2013. And what he's done here is he ran, in this instance, an NMR, STD NMR primary screen, as well as an SPR screen for the same target. And the Venn diagram demonstrates that the overlap between the two screening methods, and you can see there isn't a great deal of overlap. And in actual fact, that the crystal structures that were eventually determined for these fragments binding were different depending upon which different primary screen that was being run. So it's well known, you know, biophysic techniques all suffer from a variety of different false positives as well as false negatives due to the way the technologies work. In terms of our requirement for these chip-based biophysic screening methods, we obviously needed it to be sensitive enough um, to enable determine bindings of uh, weak affinity fragments, and also we needed sufficient throughput both for the hit ID phase as, as well as uh, rapid analog expansion. <clears throat> 